So today, right now we had an interaction of certain neoplastic conditions in dogs and cats, where our veterinary oncology has not gone that much deep, especially our Indian veterinary oncology. In the cow, we might have seen certain neoplastic conditions. At the most horrible neoplastic condition, we know the ethamoid cell carcinoma. Of course, there is no treatment. Then so many other neoplastic conditions like other nodules, skin tumors, etc. In dogs, even though we don't have an oncotherapeutic protocol, we, the regular practitioners, out of hard work has developed certain regimen of therapy. Not only in our allopathic medical science, but also in parallel medical sciences or alternative therapies. May it be homeopathy or Ayurvedam or naturopathy or any other medicine which expert and experienced doctors have gone through. Each doctor have, has his or her own experience in that kind. So, likewise, when we think about the neoplastic conditions of dogs, we have studied in the college as the gonadal tumors. We have a lot of endocrine glands on the body, like starting from the hypothalamus, then the hypophysis, parathyroid, thyroid, the pancreas, adrenals and the gonadal organs. So the male gonadal organs, they produce androgens and the female gonadal organs, they produce the estrogens. So we know the female gonadal organ is always kept inside the body and in none of the species, it is kept outside. But the male gonadal organs are kept inside the body in some species, especially in avians, but it is kept outside the body in most of the mammals. We know the temperature variation between mammals and avians. That is said to be the reason. So we know the gonadal hormones and the functions of the gonad. They have their endocrinological function as well as their exocrinological function. Especially we know the pancreas. They have the endocrinological function as well as the exocrinological function. We know the endocrine part of the pancreas. It has the alpha cells and the beta cells. The alpha cells produce glucagon and beta cells produce insulin. So also we have the male gonadal gland, they have the exocrine part as well as the endocrine part. So they serve in different functions, like they produce hormones. You know the main hormone <clears throat> produced from the male gonad, that is the testis. It is nothing but the testosterone. Then we have the secretory part 
is the main part in the testes which produces sperms it's very important because it is so divine that it maintains the population of the world whatever it be maybe the bird maybe the mammal maybe the amphibian whatever it be so the male gonadal glands gonads that is a testis in general are kept outside in mammals but we have certain exceptions we know very well we know what is happening in elephants in elephants as i told or we know elephants have normally a temperature which is lower than other mammals and in the elephant the testis can be seen inside the abdominal cavity but in the domesticated animals like the buck the ox the dog cats and all these mammalian species we can see the gonads kept outside so all these things have been done by the nature we call the god the mighty element and now in this session we are going to deal with Sertoli cells tumor or Sertoli cell neoplasia in the dog. Now I am narrating some of my cases for evaluation. So let me have an introduction of Sertoli cells, Sertoli cell tumor, Sertoli cells. So when you take the cross section of the testis, we know that the testis have their covering with the skin that is a scrotum. Then they have various tunics that is for protection of the testis. There is a little bit of fluid inside, and inside. All these tunics, the testis is well protected. Actually, for spermatogenesis to occur, an optimal body, an optimal temperature should be there. This temperature is being maintained in the testis parenchyma. So the testis, histologically, See, histology is a boring subject. We all know we are all doctors when, when we studied veterinary science. I don't know how I passed this histology. That much tough it was. Actually, you know what we did in histology examination? They might have put the slide during the examination. Lot of microscopes are there. They will ring the bell. Ting what to do we used to go and see what is inside see all the students which who are studying well they will go and see people like me what can i do i don't know the histology of all these tissues so what we did we a certain number of people we did we did not look into the microscope but instead of looking into the microscope we looked onto to the sides how the slide is looking like Sometimes the histology department may be having a, only one slide of the testis and the tip of the slide may be broken. And we are looking at the morphology of the slide. Oh, that broken slide. It is, if, the, if it's a broken slide at the tip or right corner, it is the testis. If it is on the left corner, it is the ovary. If the breakage, if the, it is one side is fully broken and it is covered with a cello tape, uh, then it is pancreas. These things we knew very well. 
and actually we studied the histology like that and we went for the spotting examination after studying the morphology of these slides because no frankly speaking histological examination was very tough for studying and also for examination so there is no other option we have to go through the spotting examination the practical examination so we did like that so that was an interesting story when we were uh, students but that is not the condition now now we have become professionals doctors unfortunately we have to find out what is the abnormality in the tissue for that first of all we will have to know the normality of the tissue see my children were as my internship trainees were asking me how to auscultate rails rails and bronchi i asked them you purchase a stethoscope you go and auscultate all the cases you get continue with going continue going on with auscultation and after about 10000 auscultations you will come to know how the normal lung sounds are that much extensive and vast it is then only you can go for abnormal sound auscultation so that is right the same thing is happening in histology also so in histologically the test is it has lot of seminiferous tubules inside in the histological section we can see the cut section of these seminiferous tubules and the cells which are lining the lumen of the seminiferous tubules <clears throat> then what we can see in between these seminiferous tubules we can see some interstitial cells these interstitial cells are known as the interstitial cells of lady or lady cells ladic cells also may undergo neoplastic reactions on certain conditions of incubation or due to some genetic causes is ladic cell tumor so this ladic cells they produce or they secrete testosterone hormone okay the interstitial cells that is the interstitial cells of lady they secrete testosterone hormone and they are found in between the seminiferous tubules that is the interstitial space so normally we all know sections are stained by hematoxylin and eosin not by our routine romanowski stains they stained by hematoxylin and eosin and inside the seminiferous tubule we can see lot of cells in different different stages those are the stages of spermatogenesis the sperms their development and different phases that is the typicality of this spermatogenesis in between this spermatogenesis we can see light stain around cells which produces estrogen that is it it produces estrogen this estrogen will antagonize the excess produced testosterone from the lady cells in the male so we can say that in the male testosterone as well as estrogen is being produced but estrogen is being produced only in lower quantities than the testosterone because the testosterone has to dominate so the same thing happens in human beings also sometimes 
the estrogen hormones may dominate and you can see certain she males or ladies lady like people no i am not going deep into it so this intermediates so same thing happens in animals also so all these group of cells like the interstitial cells of lady or the sertoli cells on chronic irritation or on chronic incubation it can undergo neoplastic reaction what is a neoplasia it is nothing but uncontrolled multiplication of cells so what's the feature of a neoplastic cell mainly prominent mitotic figures so if the cell has an uncontrolled multiplication with the prominent mitotic figures and for the fast mitosis there should be nucleoli so presence of nucleoli presence of fast multiplying cells presence of mitotic figures or mostly aberrant mitotic figures points that it's a neoplastic reaction of the cell and this sertoli cell neoplasia or we call a sertoli cell tumor mainly occurs in animals which are cryptorchid in nature we know in cryptorchidism the testes fail to descend into the scrotal sac through the inguinal canal so such a testis will be retained inside the abdominal cavity and after years together like 6 or 7 or 8 years after incubation it undergoes incubation otherwise it should have been normally outside the body cavity now it is inside the body cavity so all the cells will undergo incubation and this incubation is probably a reason for the sertoli cell tumor so generally this is found sertoli cell tumor is found in crypt orchid animals we did not say crypt orchid males because only males will be having this sertoli cell tumor see it is so interesting that when i was dealing with my internship trainees they are less experienced because they have just come from the college and while i performing the ultrasound i simply asked them maybe a pregnancy diagnosis in a bitch while i am performing i used to ask them see baby so where does the prostate be seen here then unfortunately quite naturally i say is you know out of their fear to me sometimes maybe i am little bit short of word with these students because i am very particular that these students should study very well when going through me they should acquire a lot of things within this two months so i should i will naturally i'll be very uh, strict to them and out of their uh, fright they will immediately tell sir this is the area for uh, prostate then i will put the transducer there and ask them this is this the prostate i uh, yes sir see this animal has come for pregnancy diagnosis then how can we say that it is a prostate oh then only they could realize that they have committed a blunder 
No, it's all it's a right joke only. So, so that is cryptorganism can be a reason of a reason for a set all cell tumor. So, but this is not the only reason for neoplastic reactions of the Sertoli cells. It can even happen when it is inside the scrotal sac. Sometimes it can be seen as an ectopic testis, somewhere in the parainguinal region, somewhere anterior to the parainguinal region, somewhere beneath the skin as a subcutaneous mass. Everywhere, when it is located, it can undergo neoplastic reactions. So, Sertoli cell tumor, or we say Sertoli cell adenoma, can be seen located in the parainguinal region or the intrascrotal location or intra-abdominal location. So parainguinal regions, uh, intrascrotal region, where the normally the testis is located. Then also sometimes retained inside the abdominal cavity. Whenever it is seen outside, it may be very easy for a doctor to suspect that it could be neoplastic condition of the testis. Little bit it be easy because obviously we can see it, but sometimes it is being hidden inside the abdominal cavity, then we will have to use our brain according to the clinical science. They have certain specific uh, clinical science. And another important feature is that what I have seen out of my clinical practice, I have, so I have come across with at least 15 to 20 clinical cases of Sertoli cell tumor. In almost all these cases, I have performed orchidectomy. Sometimes I could cut open the scrotal sac and remove the neoplastic testis. Sometimes I could cut open the parainguinal area or the subscrotal area or the subcutaneous area to excise off the neoplastic testis or in some cases, extremes of cases, I have conducted laparotomy after performing ultrasound and locating and confirming that it is inside the abdominal cavity. So I am going to picturize and differentiate and describe the most important four clinical cases which I came across. And the most important uh, or the very interesting feature which I was viewing was that all the clinical science, whatever it be, we are going to explain the clinical science. What all the clinical science are there, all these clinical science will be vanished after the surgery. So it is a radical surgery, that means a radical surgery. You surgically remove the cause, then your treatment is finished. So it is, that means it is, treatment is so simple. This is what I've seen out of my experience. Like we'll go to symptoms. Symptoms are so clear. These are not vague symptoms. These are not unclear symptoms. These are not atypical symptoms. Symptoms are so clear and confirmatory from the clinical science itself.
That is the advantage of this thesis in the diagnosis. So we know in our textbook, in my textbook, I have written, okay, I have written. Diagnosis is the most important part on approach of a clinical case. Diagnosis. If we fail to diagnose, I say we are not a competent doctor. Okay, one case we fail, okay. Two cases we fail, okay. We are failing continuously to diagnose or judge the condition. Then we are not a good clinician. That is what in my textbook it is written. I have given 100 questions in the last portion. Purposefully I have put these 100 questions. Just to evaluate ourselves and to see where we, we stand. So, my dear friends, cell tumor has its own clinical signs which are very clear. The bilateral symmetrical alopecia is so clear that the alopecia can be seen not on the chest region, may not be visible on the chest region. Some animals, chest also may be showing alopecia, but both the sides of the abdomen, you can see the alopecia like the area which has been shaved. Classical demarcated alopecia. Those are so typical. And on one side, such a the, the typical alopecia will be there. And on the other side of the abdomen, you can see the same pattern. So a bilateral symmetrical alopecia. No, absolutely symmetrical. I don't know how this occurs. Nobody knows. In no textbook it is said how this occurs. It occurs. It occurs. So, a bilateral symmetrical alopecia. Whenever there is a symmetrical alopecia which is in the bilateral aspect, always it is said we should suspect an endocrinological disorder. Of course, that is great. That is a reality. So, bilateral symmetrical alopecia of the abdomen, abdominal wall. When you go to the ventral abdomen, you can see the area completely devoid of fur. I will not say hair. There is no hair on the body of the dog. It's only fur. Fur. There is no finger on the dog. It's only digit. There is no nail of the dog. It's only claw. So the fur, you can see that the ventral abdominal region is totally devoid of fur. As if somebody has shaved that area completely. I'll show, show some photographs. So, that is the typicality of the alopecia. And another thing is that there won't be any follicle at all. Active follicles itself will be lost. And so the area of alopecia will be completely smooth, devoid of hairs. Fur. No fur, no follicles, completely inactive follicular spaces. That's the typicality of this cetrolysis cell tumor. So a bilateral symmetrical alopecia of the abdomen. Then sometimes in some animals you can see the alopecia is extending forward anteriorly or we say cranially towards the chest cavity. There also you can see the alopecia. And then there also it will be symmetrical on both sides. This alopecia can be extended down onto the exact medial thigh regions. All the groin region, the inguinal region, no fur will be there. In extensive cases, it will be involving the dorsal areas also. And in, but in extensive areas, extensive cases, there will be black skin, hyperpigmentation. What is hyper? Why is there is hyperpigmentation? 
it is substantiable the fur coat should be there normally on a white skin to prevent the skin from injuries due to ultraviolet rays cosmic rays etc but if no fur coat is there there will be complete denudation of the supra epithelial tissue that is the keratin layer will be lost so the skin is bare somehow the body mechanism has to protect the skin how the body mechanism is protect melatonin will be activated msh will be released so the melanocytes will be stimulated to secrete more melanin in order to protect the skin so the skin will appear black that we call it as hyperpigmentation so hyperpigmentation is a classical feature of this cetralisin tube and as i said it's a feminizing tumor because see the estrogen producing cells has undergone neoplastic reaction so there will be tremendous multiplication of cells it's not real typical hyperplasia but it's neoplasia new cells so due to the neoplast neoplasia there will be tremendous quantity of estrogen is released and this estrogen will in turn influence the behavioral pattern of the male dog what's the behavioral pattern normally how the dog will the male dog will urinate they all have their territorial behavior they will mark the territory they'll go to our four sides they will mark. they will go always they will lift one leg they spray the urine there they will go to the next place there also lift the leg spray the urine there and so all these things occur this we say as a territorial behavior some other see then they mark their territory somehow a second dog is coming he will come and smell the pheromones in that urine and he will sense that oh this is dangerous i should not take you for a long time this is the territory of somebody else i have to kick off from here at the earliest otherwise he may kick me off so what he oh he will run run away so normally it will lift the leg and then urinate but in excess quantities of estrogens there will be feminization behavior that means it becomes a girl feminization behavior it will squat down generally what female dogs are doing bitches are doing they will squat and then urinate see the same thing happens in humans also see i'm not going out of the subject in human beings male they stand erect and they piss what the females do they will sit somewhere and then piss the same thing is happening in all the species same thing that is a feminize that's a feminine feminine behavior in all the species so in the males since there is a feminization process going on or a feminizing behavior has occurred it will squat down and urinate so sometimes we may think that it is due to dysuria see squatting urination can take place in prostatic diseases in males or dysuria or strangulation due to a urinary obstruction maybe a stone or a tumor or a polyp inside the urethra or the bladder and neck so all this has to be differentiated so we have to consider a set of symptoms a group of symptoms a syndrome we can say so a squatting posture of urination then when you look the prepuce there will be hypertrophy of the prepuce the prepuce you can see the enlarged prepuce sometimes hanging down i have seen very long prepuce 
up to even 4 inches long prepuce. The prepuce itself is 4 inches long, where I, I couldn't take the photograph. It was long back. Prepuce itself is long. So it may be hanging down, curving and hanging down. And sometimes, so this is enlarged hypertrophic prepuce. And in almost all the cases you can see gynecomastia. Definitely, it is mandatory because it's a feminizing tumor. All the mammary gland lactating tissue will get hypertrophied. And this hypertrophy in turn produces enlarged nipples. And these enlarged nipples can be seen hanging down. This I have noticed in almost all the cases of cell tumor. So that is gynecomastia. See, there is gynecomastia. Masta means male. Gynecho means female. Feminization of the male. So, gynecomastia. So, gynecomastia is a technical term which is borrowed from human gynecology or human medical science. So gynecomastia is so typical in cell tumor. Then frequent urination. Generally frequent urination, frequently it will squat down and urinate. Frequent urination. It's so typical to Cetoli cell tumor. Then prostatic pathologies, especially prostatitis and prostatic enlargement. This can happen due to a feminization, pathological feminization program. Then generally, we know the feminine sound. I'm having a masculine sound. Yes, yes. The female will say yes, yes, yes. So this is this is the female and the male sound. So that is a change of the pitch. Yes, 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 yes. So the, the female and the male sounds. The same thing occur in dogs also. Where the German Shepherd dog, see, I'm a mimicry artist also, so I can imitate all these sounds. If the German Shepherd, males, they can bark like, oh, oh, oh. So the maleness, the masculine, the maleness will come out of the sound. From the voice itself, we can see it could be, it is a male. The female will have, what, what, what? Like a feminine sound will be there. So that feminine voice, it's so typical in all species, including human beings. So there will be a change in pitch of the bark. The bark also will be slightly feminized. So there will be slight change in the pitch of the bark. That is the feminizing behavior. So these were the symptoms of Classical science of a cell tumor. See, being a doctor, we should suspect a feminizing tumor, like a cell tumor. Whenever you are encountering these clinical signs, see, in a rural area, in no way you can take an ultrasound or you cannot cut the testis and send it for histopathological examination. Everything can be should be done with our hand and brain only. So, my dear friends, in our regular clinical practice, we can suspect and to a certain extent, we can conclusively say it is a feminizing tumor just from the clinical science itself. So, in the Merck veterinary manual, it is clearly written for certain diseases, 
For example, can I disturb her? The probably on the part of the diagnosis, it is written in the first sentence. Can I disturb her or caries is a disease which can be diagnosed merely from the clinical signs because it is a pantropic virus. We know it affects all the systems of the body. And so it exerts all the systemic affections and all the systemic signs. Likewise, this also can be diagnosed from the, just from the clinical signs because these clinical signs, eight clinical signs are so typical. Change in pitch of the bark. Can you see in any other disease? Gynecomastia, can you see in any other disease? Yes, can be seen in a ledic tumor. Pendulous, enlarged repuse. Can you see in any other disease? So, all this can be attributed to the diagnosis of cetrolic cell tumor. Everybody know how a male dog urinates. Typically, they urinate in different, 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 small, small changing patterns, but this is the commonest pattern the male is urinating. And when feminization occurs, the male will go and squat and having a typical posture of the squatting type of a urination. Got it. So then, naturally, if it is a cell tumor, essentially it should have a pendulous hypertrophic perpuse. We can see the pendulous hypertrophic perpuse here. It is arrowed here. Hypertrophic pendulous perpuse. And sometimes you can see, see this is a perpuse. You can see the hypertrophic perpuse. You can see the small scrotum. And you can see the undescended testis has become a large testicular tumor. This picture is taken from the internet. It's not my picture. It's an undescended testis. So, so this, with this, we can suspect that it, it is a cetrolic cell tumor. Here also in this animal, in this picture also you can see the typical swelling of the paraingual region, the subcutaneous swelling, and you can see that there is no intrascrotal testis, and this testis is located in another area where it is seen as an ectopic testis. And this ectopic testis, you can see the ectopic testis located here. This is just for your information that there will be hypertrophic perpuse and you can see the scrotal sac. So the treatment in cetrolic cell tumor, there is no explanation for the treatment. There is no need of any explanation. Wherever the neoplastic testis is located, by surgical methods, take it out. That is the only treatment. From the gross appearance itself, from the cut portions or the cut surfaces, we can say it is a neoplastic tissue. See, a normal testis.
you can see some calcified areas there are some calcified areas and necrotic areas completely necrotic pigmented and calcified areas can be seen in two chronic cases okay that is regarding the gross appearance of our uh, cetolicyl tumor see in this picture we can see the differentiation between this see these are the two testes which were removed from the same animal and we can see the neoplastic testes and the normal testes see what a difference between these two pictures so that is a neoplastic testes so this is the appearance of the normal testes you can see the semi cross section of the seminiferous tubules these are the seminiferous tubules you can see the interstitial space and these are the interstitial cells these are the cells lining the seminiferous tubules lot of cells are there naturally all these cells almost 80 to 90 percent of these cells will be different stages of spermatogenesis only and you can see the lumen of the seminiferous tubule in all this uh, lumen of the seminiferous tubules so here you can see the seminiferous tubule cross section the interstitial channels the interstitial cells the lumen of the seminiferous tubules and all lot of cells lining the seminiferous tubules those are the different stages of spermatogenesis and when you highlight this you can see this is a seminiferous tubule you can see the wall of the seminiferous tubule that is smooth muscle which are involved in pumping of the sperm uh, during coitus and the smooth muscles are there then you can see the interstitial cells of leydig see this are the interstitial cells of leydig which has nucleus inside then here also here this inside the seminiferous tubules there is a lumen here different stages of spermatozoa spermatogenesis is there the spermatids are there the primary spermatocytes which have the ropy nucleus inside are there you can see the light stained cetoli cells see this is a spermatid cell you can see the light stained uh, cetoli cell this is the normal appearance of the histological appearance of the seminiferous tubules or the testes and when the testes undergoes neoplastic condition of the seminiferous tubules sorry, neoplastic conditions of the cetoli cells you can see enormous cetoli cells are there due to neoplasm thousands and thousands of millions or millions of cetoli cells are there which are highly deeply stained hyper uh, is, uh, what is it a lot of more uh, stain uptaking is there that is polychromatic uh, cells are there polychromatic cells and uh, you can see the number of cells and the complete cells are being occupied inside the cetoli inside the lumen and is thickly packed there is no lumen at all this is a typical appearance of a cetoli cell tumor histology and let me go to the case case number one let me take case number one and case number one was presented to me when I was working in one district hospital, it was a dashant eight years old. I already told that, see, this cetoli cells will not be seen in very young dogs. As the process of incubation is going on, we can see. So, this dashant was presented and the client said that it is drinking a lot of water and polydipsia was a symptom in this case which i didn't narrate in the other slide so in this case polydipsia was there and it was a monarchic dog and the client himself said that it is behaving as if it is a female always having a loving nature and having squatting type of urination and urinating maturating all the time 
So it was a monarchy and the client himself said that there was a swelling on the side of the penis. So it had an ectopic on clinical examination, it had an ectopic large para inguinal subcutaneous neoplastic mass, which I confirmed that it was a testis because it was a monarchy. That there was only one testis inside the scrotum, and the other testis was missing, and it was this thing only. And there was cutaneous hyperpigmentation with alopecia. That's so typical cutaneous hyperpigmentation and alopecia. There was a pendulous hypertrophic prepuce. It is so typical pendulous hypertrophic prepuce. Gynecomastia, all the mammary glands were modified into hypertrophic masses and no milk was coming out. And gynecomastia and there was a change in pitch of the bark. Because, you know, we can irritate the animal and see how far it is barking. And the owner himself narrated that there was a squatting posture of urination. So that was case number one. See, now I am holding the left hind limb and the, the owner is holding the belt and leash of the animal. We can see the age of the, the senior uh, animal. Having eight years of age, and now we have, we have a close up here itself. We can see I'm holding the left limb, left hind limb, which I'm pulling it backwards. I'm holding because I'm showing this <coughs> left inguinal area. Let me have a close up so you can see the typical gynecomastia, very large mammary glands. It's not mammary tumor, it is soft in nature. You can see the pendulous prepuce, you can see the gynecomastia and the pendulous prepuce with severe hyperpigmentation. You can see here, you can see the pendulous prepuce with the gynecomastia and the prepuce is completely, prepuce and the ventral abdomen is completely hyperpigmented. Okay, let me again go deep. That is, let me go a little bit close up. You can see the gynecomastia, see the pendulous mammary glands or nipples, well developed and pendulous nipples. You can see the hypertrophied prepuce, and you can see the very big inguinal mass, the para inguinal mass that was typically the testis. So, it was a para inguinal mass typical to the Sertoli cell tumor. Dr. Rajanish, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. So, is there any problem with the internet? Slightly slow, but it's okay, sir. Okay, okay. So, you can, now I think everybody can see the gynecomastia, the hyperpigmentation of the ventral abdomen, the hypertrophy of the prepuce. Any problem, Dr. Rajanish? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Then the very big parainguinal or the ectopic testis. See, in this you can see the pendulous hypertrophied prepuce, the gynecomastia, the hyperpigmentation of all the areas, including the prepuce, the prepucial skin, and the ventral abdomen. And here you can see the para inguinal testis, which is located subcutaneously. So, quite natural. What will we do? We will opt for surgery. Quite naturally, I also opted for surgery. This is again the close-up view. Here you can see 
the pendulous hanging hypertrophied repules the developed well developed and hanging down uh, nipple you can see the left paraguinal testis and uh, this is surgical excision i could take out the mass and uh, this was a little little long back i could not get the histopathological slides but this mass was subjected for histopathological examination in a human laboratory and they said there were lot of neoplastic satoli cells so typical to satoli cell tumor it was it will be evident because in humans as well as in dogs the same is happening the same Histological features are all the same. So there was surgical excision followed by histopathological examination and confirmation. Once you remove the neoplastic mass, everything will be okay. That is a typicality. I will show you another case. Let us go through the case number two. It's a pug, nine years old. The pug was presented to me with complete hyperpigmentation of everywhere in the body. It had malassezia, that is another thing. But these hyperpigmentations on the ventral abdomen and the lateral abdomens, etc., the inguinal region and the medial thigh was due to the neoplastic testis. And both the testes were found inside this cartoon. Complete hyperpigmentation of the entire skin with the pruritus. Quite naturally, when there is a skin reaction, this uh, malassezia, etc., may proliferate and it may show a malassezia dermatitis. Both the testes were located intrascrotally, and the neoplastic testes was three times larger than the normal one. And it also had a hypertrophic perpuse. There was no significant gynecomas here. That was the feature which I found in this dog. There was no significant gynecomas here. Orchidectomy was performed and satolic tumor was confirmed by histopathology. See, this is the bug <coughs> which I have found. See the hypertrophy de propuse. There is no pronounced gynecomas here. But there is a large scrotum. And typically, one testis, 
So I am holding both the testes. One testis was larger than the other. So this enlarged testis was operated out and the testis was subjected for histopathology and confirmation. So that we could confirm it after the surgery only. In this case, I took the needle biopsy, FNAC. I took the FNA, fine needle aspirate, and I found some neoplastic cells. But these neoplastic cells, I don't believe in the aspiration I got, not the Sertoli cells, but some other cells, possibly could be the distichial cells of lady. But on histological examination, the pathologist confirmed that it was Sertoli cell tumor. Quite naturally, my dear friends, you can uh, take the help, seek the help of human pathologists also in this condition. Because the human testis as well as the dog testis will look like the same. There is no difference. The human pathologist can easily identify the Sertoli cell tumor. Because anatomical peculiarity, so as the histological peculiarity is also the same. So the pathological peculiarity also, histopathological peculiarity will also be the same, quite naturally. Then we will go to case number three. Case number three was a Spitz, nine years old. And the Spitz was presented to my clinics with alopecia of the ventral belly, thighs and inguinals. No fur at all. It had a hypertrophic prepuce and it had a gynecomastia. Neoplastic testis was located intrascrotally. There were mild hyperpigmentations on the ventral belly skin. A large neoplastic intrascrotal testis with the normal other testis. See naturally, one testis will be involved and the other testis will be normal. And there will be a big size difference as we saw this in this uh, slide. See this, this way. There will be a big size difference of the normal testis and the neoplastic testis. And Sertoli cell tumor was confirmed at last after surgery by histopathological examination. So this is the dog. As yes, you can see, the ventral abdominal skin, the medial thigh region, the buttock, the scrotal sac, everywhere are seen as if, as if it is shaved. Actually, I have not shaved it. You can see the hypertrophic perfuse. The moderate gynecomastia, see the moderate gynecomastia, the hyperpigmented skin, and now the one testis which is seen was very large when compared to the other small normal testis. So I decided to conduct orchidectomy in this animal. Now you can see uh, the hyperpigmentation with acanthosis nigricans, a little bit typical acanthosis, but severe hyperpigmentation. You can see the hypertrophic perfuse and a moderate gynecomastia, enlarged neoplastic testis, and the small testis is actually masked on the other side. I cannot see it. See, I decided orchidectomy in this animal. Now I'm preparing for the orchidectomy. Now, orchidectomy is not a very big, it is a, not a very big uh, surgery. It's a very small, uh, light surgery. Draped it. After putting the first incision, I saw the enlarged testis which has come out with the tortuous uh, supply, blood supply. And I've cut off the neoplastic testis, taken out both the testis. You know, so this is the neoplastic. I took the photograph of the neoplastic testis only. So the epid epidermis is completely hypertrophied and enlarged. It this is completely enlarged. So this is the head of the epidermis, this is the body of the epidermis, this is the tail of the epidermis. 
and is enlarged very large neoplastic testes and now I have cut up one. I have cut the parenchyma of the neoplastic testes and typically this show the bulging out of the flesh that is a neoplastic mass that is so typical and then this after cutting like this it was subjected for histopathological examination and I confirmed that it was a uh, cetroid cell a tumor. Then the case number four is so typical and it was so complicated also. It is a German Shepherd eight years old. And this case, you know, this case, this man, this uh, the owner of this case was a jewelry owner. He came to me and he said, Doctor, I have an eight years old male German Shepherd. This is having a skin problem for the last three years. Somebody told that you are a dermatologist. You are a specialist in dermatologist. And I have been giving treatment with so many doctors and so many other quacks also against this dermatopathy. No fur is there. Severe pruritus is there. And so I spend a lot of money over this animal. Now somebody told that you are a skin specialist. Please come to my house and have a look. I said, I'm not coming to your house. You please bring the dog here. No doctor, he is very aggressive. Very aggressive. I cannot take it here. Oh. Then no scope. Then I have to go to the house only. Anyway, my internship trainee was there. And I took this boy also with me. I went to the house. And this German Shepherd is, I saw the temperament. He was inside the kennel. I asked the gentleman to tie him outside. And when he was outside, he was, actually he was struggling a lot to break the chain and to bite me. That much aggressive it was. And the, from the, a distance I watched him and it is generally aggressive to strangers. Alopecia of the trunk, belly and hind limbs. There was perpetual hypertrophy which was well evident. Perpuse was hanging down, pendulous and long. There was typical gynecomastia. Moderate hyperpigmentations and it was a monarchid. Somehow he caught hold of the, he restrained the animal. I went near it and I examined. And this boy, my internship trainee was standing nearby. I did not tell anything because from the pendulous prepuce itself, I got a clue. That's why I went and examined. I knew that this is a monarchid. And the owner narrated that it had a squatting position of urination. And then what I did was, I called this boy, my boy, my industrial trainer, and asked him, you go near the animal, you examine the animal, examine the skin and all other parts of the animal, you find out what the disease is. See, before that I palpated the abdominal cavity. Inside the abdominal cavity, I palpated a very large mass that was so typical. And then only I stepped back and I asked my boy to go near it, examine and find out the root cause of the alopecia. He went there, so you know, I cannot blame him, he's a small boy. Just in his internship only. But he has to study. How we will teach a person how to swim? There is no theory in swimming. If somebody has to learn swimming, what we can do? With a knack, take him to the bank of the pond, push him into the pond. Okay, in the pond, he will somehow, he will study with drinking a lot of water, etc. He will study how to struggle and he will study how to swim. Like that, I took this, I, I uh, demanded my boy to go near the patient, examine and find out the real cause. And he is actually, he was also frightened at me. 
because he also know that i am also little bit short of boy and this boy anyway he went near it and he said unfortunately he said it is malice said dermatitis and i taught him what all the features are there during all the time this honor of the dog was restraining the dog because he's no so look at his face itself he's typically very aggressive he may bite somehow he break the chain means he will bite i've been bitten by dogs eight times eight times once i was severely bitten by a, a german shepherd where i was hospitalized for two weeks so i know the pain of bite of the dog so anyway examine the, the, the dog see you can see in this dog in this patient you can see from a distance itself you can see the developed nipples you can see the hypertrophic prepuce you can see the alopecia the even alopecia on the sides see all these things you can see later on then this is a close up view here you can see the gynecomastia can be clearly seen here the gynecomastia and the pendulous prepuce with the hyperpigmentation these are all areas of hyperpigmentation okay see the hypertrophic prepuce the pendulous prepuce and the gynecomastia see the gynecomastia the developed nipples you don't know how i struggle to take these pictures it was very difficult to take these pictures right there and you know after having a thorough clinical examination of the animal i could not do much i said you have to take the dog to my clinic i want to conduct ultrasound examination in this dog is that it is impossible doctor to carry him without a sedation okay i said you i will sedate him you carry it and i sedated him with the silazine and then he took it in an auto rickshaw and he took it to my hospital and they right on that day itself i conducted the ultrasound examination on ultrasound examination i saw the very big neoplastic mass inside this see i am i am experienced in ultrasound also i can easily judge that it is a neoplastic mass because of the heterogeneous appearance so this is a neoplastic appearance you know neoplastic mass inside the abdominal cavity so it was very easy to confirm that the it is a neoplastic mass and it could be the retained testes inside and so i decided laparotomy on that the very same day because i don't want to want to waste much of the time this is my theater and i have taken inside and this is the now the patient is under anesthesia now you can see the small scrotal sac which contains only one testis inside only one testis inside see this is not shaved you can see the hyperpigmentation and the areas of alopecia this is not shaved this has gone complete the fur has gone completely there is no devoid totally devoid of fur you can see the next picture see you can see the pendulous prepuce which is hanging down on my operation table you can see the gynecomastia the pendulous and the hypertrophy the developed nipples which are hanging down you can see the thigh with entire alopecia and hyperpigmentation you can see the prepuce with hyperpigmentation moderate hyperpigmentation of the ven entire ventral abdomen you can see the shaved appearance of the alopecia you can see the axilla which is completely hyperpigmented so this is the typicality you can see both the hind limbs completely hypertrophic uh, hyperpigmented and alopecia so now i am going to conduct laparotomy in this animal so it is a radical laparotomy because it is already confirmed to be cetolicetosis abdominal neoplastic mass so 
have draped it now and I've now started performing the laparotomy. And now no need to explain of the on the laparotomy because you are all doing it regularly. And now I've conducted it and I have extracted. See, in my hands, I'm holding the very large. See, the, compare the size of my palm and the large size of the neoplastic mass extracted out from the abdominal cavity. How large it was, how tortuous all the blood vessels were. It was complete, no pool of blood was there. See, this is a neoplastic test. Is. See the neoplastics. All the artery forceps are used to clamp all the blood vessels. The pool of blood was there because it is a neoplastic mass. It was very difficult for the uh, ligation itself. And the whole mass was taken out almost uh, 200 grams mass was there. And this whole mass was taken out. You can see irregular shape of the neoplastic testis. And I have to confirm this as a testis with histopathologic -like examination. I cut some pieces and I subjected the piece for histopathological -like examination. And ultimately, it was diagnosed as cetolicyl tumor. Now you know, I did no other treatment in this dog. I did not do any other treatment. I did not give any supplement. Purposefully, I did not give any supplement. I just wanted to prove that it is only this alopecia and other reactions were only due to this cetolicyl tumor. You know, this is the photograph taken after three months. Just laparotomy and extraction of the neoplastic testis only. So you can compare with the old photograph and the new with the new photograph. See what a dramatic difference. See all the photograph, you look to the thigh, the ventral abdomen, the prepuce, everything. See the size of the prepuce, it is dramatically reduced. The, when, the lateral chest and the lateral abdomen, you, all the fur has come. The lateral thigh, everywhere the fur has come. No other supplements were given. Just only radical laparotomy, that's all. And now, so this is a very interesting cases of uh, scrotal, uh, sorry, sorry uh, cetroly cell tumor. It is very interesting. No, uh, after di so here the diagnosis is most important. Once you diagnose it, uh, once you diagnose it accurately, the treatment also quite naturally comes. What is the treatment, doctor sir? Doc, does he? A doctor should diagnose from his mind, is from his brain. The treatment, once you say that it is a cetroly cell tumor, then anybody who is literate can do, go to the internet, search in the Google treatment for cetroly cell tumor in dogs. It, all the treatment will come out. Anybody can do it. But the diagnosis, it is so unique. It should come from the doctor's brain only. That is why I always insist to my juniors and my internship trainees to work hard. After working hard only, we can make certain books like this. You know, this is a book written by me. It is it is for sale only. The Art of Pet Animal Clinical Practice. It is a book written by me. It is second edition. It is with me. Anybody who needs it, you can ping me personally. I can give you, I can send it to you. This, kind, this, is, this is sealed one. There's 420 pages. It is all color photographs. All my experience and all this. Cetroly cell tumor, everything has been printed in this only. This is my table. This is 420 pages uh, textbook, color prints. Okay, so just to show you, and this is the old picture, and this is the new picture. You can see the dramatic difference. Now, out of all my experience, which has been gathered out of uh, examining and treatment of different uh, cases of cetroly cell tumor, these were all my inferences which I gathered. All cases showed alopecia or hyperpigmentations invariably. All the cases showed alopecia or hyperpigmentations. Alopecia was not necessarily found in all cases. See, in most of the almost all the cases, alopecia was found, but you should not consider that alopecia should be there in all the cases. 
Don't expect that. Sometimes in early cases, you may not be able to see any alopecia. Only later on, alopecia will develop. Testis was found intrascrotally, paraingoinally, subcutaneously, or located intra-abdomen. Surgical removal of the neoplastic testis brought the patient to normal condition in all the cases. In all these four cases, I examined and I had the feedback that it has come to normal. And pruritus was found only in one case. In that pug only. In none of the other cases, I found pruritus. So these were my inferences, which I gathered personally out of my clinical experience with the cetolicyl tumor. And with this, now my dear friends, I am concluding everything. Bharat Mata Ki Jai. Long live our mother country. Hadwit Pharma Private Limited is a pharmaceutical company with its head office at Meerut. It was founded on 29 January 2019 with a vision to provide affordable and quality veterinary medicine to our pet parents. Hadwit Pharma is doing marketing of veterinary pharmaceuticals throughout India. In a small span of one year, we have launched 51 products in the veterinary pharma industry to serve our clients. In future one year, we are planning to have a product basket of more than 100 products. Hatwit is different from other veterinary pharma companies as we don't have distribution channel. We understand the latest needs of market and for this reason we have adapted to online module of selling our drugs to field practitioners. We are serving our clients by providing the required medicines at their doorstep, without any middleman. We directly collect orders online, mobile app, WhatsApp, telephonic from our end customers and we deliver the required products to their doorstep through our nationwide logistic partners Blue Dart, DTDC, TCI Express. We are happy to announce that in our client list, most of the leading pet practitioners of India are included. To assure the unbreakable faith of our clients in our company products, we look after the quality of products, starting from selecting the raw material for our final products, aseptic precautions during manufacturing, and proper storage of finished products till supply to the end customers to ensure quality of products. We are happy to share that Hatfit Pharma has been recognized at various business platforms. Recently, an article on Hatfit Pharma has been published in the leading business magazine, Business Connect. One more milestone in the success story for Hatfit Pharma is that the managing director of the company, Dr. Rajneesh Tyagi, has been awarded Young Asian Entrepreneurs Award at Bangkok, Thailand on 7 February 2020. Our vision states Hatfit Pharma to be a commercially viable leading veterinary pharmaceutical company in providing quality products affordable to various sections of the pet owner society. Our endeavor is to be a front runner in innovation and quality in the veterinary pharma industry. We see a very bright future for our company as we are working in pet industry which itself is growing at a higher rate, approximate growth of 20% annually. We are regularly working on the knowing of needs of our customers to serve them in a better way. We value your support to Hatfit Pharma and are very thankful to all of you. We look forward for a very strong and long business association between veterinarians and Hatfit Pharma. Thank you.